crowd is more than a large number of people. It's where the members of that group understand each other's existence. It's where they enter into a moment where they are equal. No longer are there differences, instead, there is equality. This is when everything comes together to create something greater than its first type of crowd, the baiting crowd, and a similar objective unites this crowd. The second type of crowd is united by fear, a common threat. These crowds are called the flight crowd. Next, we have the prohibition crowds, and they are driving on by refusing to do something, for instance, strike members. Then we move on to the reversal crowd that is also rebellious, they intend to bring down the existing systems. Lastly, we have the feasting crowd whose goal is shared and equal indulgence. It is also essential to note that every crowd has a goal. Without a plan, there'd be no unity and equality. Packs are groups that are self-sufficient but small. They solve problems and grow independently of other people. That's why they're so rare in the modern world, it's tough to achieve self-sufficiency with the massive population in today's cities. There are four types of packs, as explained in the rest of the idea. Hunting packs are the first type of. Hunting packs were super important in the survival of our ancestors. It allowed them to kill an animal too big or dangerous for a single human to take down on their own. Secondly, we then have the war packs aiming to kill fellow humans. The third type of pack is called the lamenting group, formed when a group member dies and is thereby torn from the group. At the end of the list, we have the increased pack that just intends to grow and expand. Nations are made up of millions of people who support a common symbol. These symbols can take the form of an object or a catchphrase, but they all unite people somehow. Whether it's a flag, a royal family, or a national slogan, these symbols bring people together, which is why they need to be appealing and multifaceted. Nations are crowds. It's that simple. When people survive, they're often seen as heroes. When you see those involved in a life or death crisis and how they persevere through it, you usually give credit to their character. Whether it's the tale of a man who loses everything but never gives up hope until he's found, or if it's the story of a wife who fights for her husband's life, we often elevate survivors to levels of power that are perhaps unnecessary.